Hello, my name is David and today I want to talk about deploying Adobe Flash Player using group policy objects. Uh, group policy objects is a way um, to use uh, Windows Server and leverage Active Directory, uh, Windows Active Directory to deploy software to multiple Windows 7 workstations in an Active Directory services domain. The issue here is that Adobe released a security bulletin which identifies several versions of Adobe Flash Player as vulnerable to attacks. It is the CVE 2015-0311 uh, um, build that is affected and uh, versions of Flash Player that are 16.0.0.287 and lower um, are likely affected by this security bulletin. So. Um, to get this started, there's a couple of things we want to do. First, we'll want to go ahead and identify uh, versions of Flash Player on our local systems to make sure that they're affected um, to see if we even need to deploy Adobe Flash Player. In this case, my workstation running Windows 7 is affected. It is um, running the uh, outdated version of Flash Player that is covered by the security bulletin. So we do want to upgrade this. And let's say I had 50 workstations of this type that I wanted to update at the same time. Well, that's what this video is really for, is so uh, that we can deploy the software to multiple workstations at the same time using a group policy object. Here's my server. Um, it is running Windows 2008 Advanced Server. Uh, sorry, R2 server uh, with Service Pack 1. It's actually just running standard. And this is where I'm going to be deploying the software from. And uh, this is also going to be my Active Directory domain controller where the group policy objects are defined that control the deployment of the software. Before I do any of this, however, we should go and visit Adobe and sign up for rights to distribute Adobe Flash Player. You can Google Distribute Adobe Flash Player to arrive at this page and then you can apply for a license to distribute Adobe Flash Player legally. Uh, and make sure that you're covered as far as the license compliance is concerned. Once you've done that, you'll be directed to a download page where you can download two MSI executables. These MSI executables are going to be the files that we will deploy using our group policy object. The first file is going to be the Windows version of the ActiveX installer that will work with Internet Explorer and will have the Flash player for Internet Explorer. The second executable is going to be a plugin based browser add in for Flash Player that will work with other browsers that use plugin based uh, Flash Player add ons like Firefox and Safari and others. So um, basically, these two MSIs are going to be what we will want to download to our server. I've already done this on our server. So um, I've uh, created a share on my server for all kinds of things that I want to deploy with um, group policy objects. And that is going to be um, a share on my server named deployments. In there I have created a folder for our Flash Player updates and I've stored both the MSIs that I've downloaded from Adobe Acrobat in this folder. I want to make sure that this folder is accessible to um, client workstations using UNC so um, that on a client workstation I can browse to the UNC path of that server and access that file. Uh, if this is not accessible via UNC um, then the deployment is not going to work. So I'll go ahead and verify that on my workstation by just going via UNC to the server and making sure that I can access the folder that my flash updates are stored in. And I can do that to I verify that. So now I'm going to go back to my server and I'm going to launch my group policy management um, and then create a policy for deploying Adobe Flash Player. I've already created a policy here named C-Deploy Adobe Flash Player. The reason I've prepended the group policy name with a C is because this is going to be a computer-based policy. And when we edit that policy and then expand policies, software settings and click on software installation under the computer configuration part uh, we can now select our files that we want to deploy so here we're going to go ahead and select new package and then browse to our UNC location via UNC notation um, that contains our MSI files double click them one at a time and then click on assigned and OK 
this is going to take a moment and then uh, it's going to go ahead and add that MSI distributable. I'm going to do the same thing for the other MSI file. And now we've successfully created a group policy object to deploy both of these software packages to all workstations. Um, what we need to do now is we need to link that group policy object at the correct organizational unit that contains our computer objects. I'm going to go ahead and open Active Directory <coughs> and show you that the Active Directory container that contains my computer that's running Windows 7 workstation is called DD Computers. So what I'll want to do is I will want to link the group policy object and just create it at this particular organizational unit. So we'll go ahead and right click that OU, select link group policy object and then find our uh, group policy object that we just created and link it here. That's really all we need to do on the server uh, in, far, in group policy management. Um, we can close that window and now run a GP update command on the server. And this will go ahead and make sure that it is up to date with all the latest policies. Once this command completes, we can then uh, run a GP update force on the workstation or simply reboot the workstation to get the updates installed. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and run a GP update force and then reboot the workstation. What it should do now is it should go ahead and pull the latest policies for this particular group policy uh, from the server, find that it needs to install some software, and ask for a reboot, a system reboot to do that at the first um, opportunity. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, oh, it looks like it has failed. Oops, looks like the um, first time this failed, um, maybe because the computer, there were some network connectivity issues. Um, either way, I ran the command again, and now it seems to have worked, and it's asking me for a reboot, so I'm going to say uh, yes, and reboot the workstation. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video while that's working, and then we'll go back to um, Adobe Acrobat and see if it has been updated when the workstation is finished rebooting. Alrighty, our workstation has finished rebooting, so uh, let's go ahead and log in and make sure that our Flash updates have installed successfully. I'll go to Control Panel and check the version of Flash Player. And it looks like the version of Flash Player has been updated to 3.05 from the uh, previous version of 2.87. So we should be good to go. The latest version of Flash Player, at least in this video, is 3.05. So um, we have successfully uh, upgraded from 2.87 to 3.05. And we should be good to go as far as the security bulletin is concerned. Um, and uh, we've also went ahead and deployed uh, Java directly via group policy to all the workstations on this particular organizational unit. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section or visit my website. Thank you.